Hey everybody, this is going to be a comment on the Wise Outdoor Cam that just came out. Well, it kind of came out, it, it isn't out yet, it's coming out in August something. Um, they just announced it yesterday, June 23rd, and you can buy it on their website. It's not available yet on Amazon. You can pre-order it, and I'm going to talk about it. Everything that I say here, don't expect it to be 100% accurate, but it should be accurate um, or close to it. This is just an educational video to let you know kind of what you're going to be getting if you buy this thing uh, or if you pre-order it or if you do buy it when it comes out. So let me give you some information that I've been able to gather on what is available with this camera. Hopefully it helps you out. I'm not going to tell you to do the thumbs up, subscribe, like, share, donate to my channel. Uh, click on my affiliate links. I'm not going to say that because nobody does any of that stuff. So let's start talking about this camera. It's going to be in a random order. I'm just going to throw out stuff that I uh, wrote down here. And then uh, you can decide if you want to get it. I'm not really sure. So let's talk about it. They are working on browser viewing, but right now it is strictly only viewable on an SD card that you could remove the SD card and connect it to your computer. You can probably view the SD card on your cell phone through the app, or you can do um, the cloud storage, and I'll talk about that in a minute. There is no RTSP. If you know what that is, good. If you don't, then you probably don't need it. But there is no RTSP and probably no plans to set it up, but who knows? Camera, the camera can go 150 yards from the base station in an open range setting. So if you were sitting outside and you had the base station and the camera with absolutely nothing in between them, no buildings, nothing blocking it, you could have up to, let me just say up to 150 yards of distance between the base station and the camera. Now, if you have this installed in your house, everything changes. You've got walls. If you were in an old house that has plaster walls and you're dealing with the metal inside the walls, you are going to have uh, a problem with that 150 yard distance. Um, if you've got metal, if you've got the camera outside, obviously, and you've got a metal door, you probably are going to not deal with that 150 yard distance at all. So that could be a limitation. Maybe yes, maybe no, it's hard to say. Plus, it's also dependent on your uh, Wi-Fi signal, I would think. Uh, let's see, things that it, you can compare it to the competitors. This is a battery-operated camera that can be placed where you can't put a wired camera. That is true. This is battery-operated. So I know there are some cameras out there. There are very few, but there are some cameras out there that are battery-operated. I'm not going to mention the one that starts with an R that I was thinking of buying that just has absolutely terrible reviews. Terrible, terrible. There are some reviews. People love that camera. Uh, I was going to buy it. They make three different versions. I was going to buy it until I looked at videos online of all three versions, three models that they sell. And I decided the, the quality was terrible. And when you were in total darkness, you couldn't see anything. You saw shadows. You could see across the street where the house had the lights in the background, but you couldn't see anything in front of you. Uh, if you wanted that for security, you would be a fool to spend the money on that camera um, because you probably would not have good quality video. That's the one thing you notice if you watch the news, that a lot of people nowadays do not have alarms in their house. If you have an alarm and somebody breaks into the house, the alarm's going to go off. They're probably going to run away. Maybe not always, but most of the time they're probably just going to take off because they don't want to be seen. Most people nowadays are buying cameras, and the cameras are really great because they capture the person, but the person goes in there and rips your house blind and has no incentive to run out because they don't hear an alarm. So, and the other problem is a lot of people are buying really cheap video cameras, uh, video security cameras, and they're junk. So if the car pulls up in front of your house, you might have a shadow of the car, but you might not even see the person, or they might be pixelated, or the picture might be too dark. You're definitely not going to see the license plate. 
Uh, you might see color, maybe not. If it's a black and white uh, night vision video, you're not going to. But on the news, you see tons of video that you just you can't make the person out. You see that on the news a lot where they're hitting runs and they've got a picture of a car driving down the street. And who knows who the heck that is. A lot of times they catch them because they get a description of the car and they find other cameras. And okay, so enough of that. But the neat thing is if you're, if you're in a bedroom, say you got a kid in the other room, take the camera, put it on the table. No bat I mean, It's running on batteries, no wires to connect. You don't have to plug it in. You've got yourself a baby cam. Uh, if you're driving the car, put it, somebody's walking outside. Um, if you're driving the car, you can put it on your dashboard and get some video. Uh, I'll talk about travel mode in a minute. Okay, so it's rechargeable. It is rechargeable. And it's PIR. So that's uh, rechargeable, yes. Can you replace the batteries? No. Non-replaceable batteries. And I'll talk about the batteries and uh, replacing in a minute. It's PIR. That is used in night vision. So it's really detecting... How do I want to say this? If you have a standard camera, a night vision camera, it's, you, it's detecting motion. It goes in there and looks at the pixels. And if the pixels change, then it knows that there's been motion. And then it might start recording if it's activated that way. PIR is measuring, I believe, off of... Uh, is it measuring off of heat? I don't know. Um, I think it is. But either way, it's PIR controlled. The travel mode, the travel mode, here we go, let's talk about the travel mode. Kind of an interesting thing, the travel mode is, how do I describe it? Um, let's say that you are in a hotel, you have your camera with you, you've got your cell phone with you, but you're in a hotel and you don't have Wi-Fi because you're not going to pay for the hotel's Wi-Fi. You can set the thing up, or it's set up in travel mode, so the camera will talk directly to your cell phone. Now, normally when we're looking at cameras, we are using Wi-Fi, you set the whole thing up, the camera can be at your, like I have a camera at my mom's house in her backyard watching for the, the like the skunks and whatever's floating around out there. That's connected through Wi-Fi. It's outside in your backyard, connected through Wi-Fi. And I will admit, I've done it with Wise, and I've done it with the, the Nui camera. <clears throat> the Nui indoor camera, which we have the Nui outdoor camera also. Um, so the camera is connected to Wi-Fi, goes into the house, uh, where it gets the, uh, the signals going through the Wi-Fi, through the router, the Wi-Fi and the router, and connects to the camera. And then my cell phone is connected, or my cell phone is talking to that connection. So I'm able to view directly through her Wi-Fi, even from a different location. This thing is different. The travel mode doesn't need Wi-Fi at all. So if you're in the hotel and you don't have Wi-Fi, and you set the camera up to watch your front door, or maybe another room, maybe you've got uh, two rooms in the hotel, whatever you're going to watch, the, you're viewing straight from your cell phone with a connection to the camera. I'm assuming it's a Wi-Fi. You're probably using a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, supposedly there's very good security on that and it is talking somehow to a special channel that people can't break into. But the travel mode is very unique because nobody else seems to have that. Where the cell phone talks directly to the, um, the camera but it's also limited in distance. Okay, night vision. Night vision in these cameras, when you buy a really good camera, a really good camera, a security camera that businesses have, they might do 85 feet, 100 feet, some of them even more. These cameras are going to be more expensive, usually going to have to be uh, hardwired, ethernet cable, um, and they're connected normally to video recorders, network recorders, but you see those in businesses, they're dome cameras and bullet cameras. So they've got a distance of maybe 65 feet, 85 feet on average. The night vision for this camera is 25 feet. 25 feet, I think the average house, depending on where you live, the average house is maybe 20, I think it's 25 feet, maybe more, 25 yards, I don't know. Um, I set up the WISE camera 
the indoor camera. I set up the indoor camera, check out my channel, you see the video, I compare the WISE indoor camera, which was, it's not a fair comparison, but the WISE indoor was outdoors, and I compared it against the NUI outdoor camera, and I showed uh, different pictures, different uh, video quality, and 25 feet in a backyard, that's going to be doable. Now, the problem is, if you set up a camera and maybe if you set it up on the front of your house, it might see to the end of the driveway, who knows. But it's limited to 25 feet for night vision. It has eight IR lights in it for the night vision. Oh, we just lost the screen. Let's get the screen back. Um, the IR lights are obviously inside the case. There is four on the left side front and four on the right side front of the camera behind the case or behind the, uh, behind the uh, what is it, like that little black, oh, what am I trying to say? I think it's either here. I think there's four here and four here, maybe four here and four here. Um, what else do we have? Maximum operating temperature. Some people are already complaining about this, but people will complain about anything. Minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 F Fahrenheit. So if you're living in Alaska, this might not work. Maybe so. I'm going to talk about that when I get down to another comment. But 120 degrees, not bad. They've done extensive testing with uh, different temperatures. And, uh, okay, so the IR lights are noticeable at night, but you have to look at it to notice it. Um, check out my video that I just told you about that I posted comparing the two cameras. I've got my Nui outdoor cam looking across a backyard and you can see the wise cam and you can see when the wise cam is off. Well, it's not off, but the wise cam is sitting on an air conditioning unit and then remotely I turn on the IR, the night vision thing, and you can see the light. You can see it light up, but I'm assuming that's because a night vision camera is seeing a night vision IR light. Um, but they do say that if you look, if you, I don't know if they're red. I don't know what you're going to see. You're probably going to see a little bit of a glow at nighttime, but that's what happens with IR lights. Um, what else do I have? i got to scroll down to get more of my info for you. I'm sorry the video, well, I'm not sorry the video is that long because it is giving you information. Is that all? Do I have more stuff or not? Oh, yeah, I have a lot more stuff. Okay. Um, mounting. The mounting of this camera. Um, it's got a base that is magnetic. I'm trying to think of who else has this type of camera. Uh, is it Arlo or is it Nest? I don't know. One of them has a camera where it's got, it's magnetic on the bottom and then it's got the base. I'm looking on the floor. I don't want to reach my camera. Okay, so... Uh, so this thing's got a base. So what you have on the bottom is you have a, there's a quarter to 20 thread in the bottom of this camera. And you can use that to mount it. You can screw a tripod mount into that. Um, I don't know if it comes, I'm sure it probably comes, I can't say for sure, but it probably comes with the wall mount so you can mount it to a wall. Obviously that's why it would be a wall mount. And that would use the quarter 20 uh, stud or bolt or whatever, so you're going to have a, a bracket that screws into the wall and then you'll screw this on with your quarter 20 uh, insert that's on the bottom or you can use the tripod or you've got the standard wise, I'm sure you've seen it or you wouldn't even be looking this up. You know how the bottom comes out? Um, let me show you. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is the base of the indoor cam. So what the new, so you see how they've got a, a magnetic piece over here? Well, there's a magnetic piece on the other one, and the stand, the stand has a magnetic piece. So you can take the thing, you can disconnect it. So if this is sitting out on the front of your house, and some kid goes in there and wants to grab this thing off of the magnetic stand, bye-bye camera. And if you have another camera that's watching them, then you might get them on video or you might not. Um, what else do we have? Let me position the camera the way it was before. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the magnetic base or we've got the swivel. It's got a swivel, that's right. It does have a, a ball swivel type thing besides the, uh, the up and down. I think it has a ball swivel. Um, 
Yeah, and then I've got the, has the threaded thing in there. And as I said, there is no RTSP or alternative streaming option. And there probably will never be, but maybe there will, but probably not. Okay, so it uses PIR for heat instead of motion detection watching a change in the pixels. Um, can be moved from room to room without worrying about power. That's very true. Um, like I said, this is a battery operated thing. So you do not have to uh, have a power cord like you do with the V2 or the V1. Um, doesn't do, it does not do continuous recording like the V2. And that could be a deal breaker for anybody. It just depends on what you want these cameras for. Now with the V2, with the outdoor camera or the V2, you can do continuous recording. As I said, I had the camera set up in my mom's backyard. I had it set with a, a huge card, 128 gig, even though they say it's limited to 32, the 128 gig worked. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, and I had it running continuous recording with 128 gig. It probably would have recorded 24 hours a day for five or six days. Plus I was live streaming. Um, this thing, I think I've got it down at the bottom. I think it's a 12 second video clip. Um, okay, now I thought that they, they mentioned it was a cool down of five minutes after it did a set, maybe a set or maybe one, uh, one alert, one detection. I can't believe that's true. But somebody else mentioned that the cool down can be set to one minutes, three minutes, or five minutes. So I believe what they're saying is after this does an alert recording or a detection, it might need one minute, three minutes, or five minutes to cool down to do that again. I don't know if that's true. One thing that I did see is that if, let's say for example, somebody is in your backyard and activates the motion detection and they are moving around because obviously they're moving so it activates motion detection and it should do the 12 second recording. But if that person stands out in your backyard and is, keeps moving around or is breaking into the window or there's activity, supposedly it will keep repeating that 12 second um, it will do a continuous record until the motion detection stop until the motion stops. So if that's true, I don't know, but I think they did mention it is not continuous record, but it will continuously record once motion is detected until it stops. And then I just don't understand the cool down about one, three, and five minutes. It, it really wasn't explained that well for me to understand it. Um, one thing that they did leak out, I don't know if they were supposed to leak out, but one thing that they did mention is there is supposedly a V3, a version 3 indoor camera in the works. So right now we've got the V2. Um, I think it was a couple years since they had the V1, and they're already working on a V3. What's in it? I don't know. So this is an outdoor camera, that it can be used indoors. So we're scrolling down to more information here. This video is really long. I don't, normally on a YouTube video, people look at it for two to three minutes and then they shut it off because we're all instant gratification and we just say, you talk too long, you could have done that in 10 seconds. And, and that's when I say, make sure you click uh, the thumbs up, the like, subscribe, and help me out. Click on my affiliate links. Oh wait, I wasn't supposed to say that. Okay, anti-theft features. You can use the quarter inch mounting bolt, uh, the threaded thing that I mentioned there on the bottom. If you're just setting this up in your backyard under an eave and you're doing it to watch the chickens in your farm or to see if somebody goes in the gate or you're probably not worried about somebody climbing up there to take this thing. Um, let's see. Oh, this is one thing that's really cool. If somebody, when you set up the camera, it locks the camera. There's probably a serial number or something in the camera. It locks the camera to your account. So if somebody goes over to your house and steals that camera and tries to set it up on a different account, they are blocked. The WISE software will block that camera from activating and it can no longer be used. It doesn't mean they can't steal the camera or that they can't steal the, uh, the SD card and look at what you've got there, but they won't be able to use the camera uh, again. 
Um, oh, that's right. Here's something else. Okay, so we see the camera, the camera and the base station. The camera, their limit, this is going to be down on another thing, but I'll say it right now. The limit that they say for the camera is 32 gigabytes, even though they admit that other people have used larger uh, SD cards. I think on mine I used a 64-bit. Maybe I used a 128. I don't know. Um, so there's a slot on the bottom for a, uh, an SD card. And there's also a slot on the base station for an SD card. So you can put SD cards in both of them. And if somebody steals the camera, you will still have your SD card in the house, in the base station, and you'll be able to see what happened. Um, what else do I want to say? Now, so I think those probably run independently. I, they didn't say if you need to have, you probably don't have to have the SD card in the camera to be able to record from the base. It's getting the video either way. So that's a cool feature. Uh, what, is, what else is there? We'll have, okay, it will have person detection. That's in the beta right now. There is no, no date when that's going to be available, but they're working on person detection for the uh, this outdoor camera. Um, complete motion capturing coming later. I don't understand what that means. Complete because they're saying it's not continuous recording. I understand that, but they're saying complete motion capture coming later. So are they saying that when it activates with motion that it will continuous? Well, I already said that. Remember I said it will continuously record um, it will continuously record as long as the active, as long as the movement is continuing, and once it uh, stops, then I don't know if it has to go into the reset. I am back. Where did I leave off? I mentioned this before. Batteries are built in and are rechargeable, but they are not replaceable. And I'll talk about the batteries in a minute. I've got another message about that. Um, let's see. Right now, when you buy this thing, you can buy, you buy a bundle. So you buy the camera and the base. One base can run four cameras. So that you have two ways that you can buy this. You can buy the bundle, which is the camera and the base, or you can buy one extra camera. Like right now, this is set up that the base is able to communicate to four cameras. That could change. They said it might go up to five, it could go even more, but it's probably going to be only four cameras. So if you buy a bundle and you buy three other cameras, then you'll be able to run four cameras off the base. If you want to run a fifth camera, you have to go out and buy another base. And with that other base, you can run four more cameras. And you can connect multiple bases. So if you want 12 cameras, you have to buy... Uh, you have to have three bases. Um, yeah, there's no limit on how many base stations you can connect, so you can connect a zillion. There is, because I'm going to talk about that in a minute, how the base station is connected. Um, what else is this? Okay, people were asking, can you plug the camera in? Um, on the back of the camera is a little rubber slot, a little rubber plug. When you remove the plug, there is a, a USB, a micro USB jack, and I think an on-off switch. And so they're saying that if you plug in, this is kind of like the V2. If you, people didn't, when you plug the V2 in outdoors and you plugged in your uh, power cord, you had to worry about liquid, water, rain, moisture getting in, not only into the camera, but into the connection. Where is that? Where's the camera? Over here. You had to worry about water leaking into here. So um, if you plug it in, you're going to have to waterproof this. And they tell you not to do it. I'll read, the, I'll read you a comment about that in a minute. Um, yeah, so it says, if you plug it in, the camera will run outdoors, but it will remove the waterproofing rating while it is plugged in. Uh, what else is there? The battery. The battery will take three to four hours to charge from zero to 
So this is a battery operated camera. If you, if you have it set up outside under an eave, you're going to have to get on a ladder, pull the camera down, uh, take it in, charge it up for three to four hours, and then put it back out. For some people, that might not be an issue. For other people, it might be. It just depends what you're going to use it for. Uh, base station can't be bought. Okay, yeah, you cannot just buy a base station. You have to buy a bundle, the camera and, a, and the, the base station as a bundle, or you can buy additional cameras, but you cannot buy just a base station. Uh, what else is there? Maximum SD card use that they support is 32 gigabytes, but others have used much larger cards, and they are not saying, they don't guarantee that, but others have done it. Will there be a solar panel option? Not right now and probably never. Um, that other company, that there are a few companies out there, the one that I mentioned with the R that talks about it's run by a battery and you can set up the solar panel that has just absolutely terrible reviews. I really wanted to buy that camera this week and I went, no, I'm just not going to waste my time. So this, they're saying no solar option. Um, you know, a lot of these solar panels, you could probably buy them and they've got the micro, uh, micro SD, <clears throat> what am I saying, micro SD, the micro USB connector, you could probably plug it in, but again, they're saying don't plug it in, they don't want it continuously powered. <clears throat> Little sip of water, since I've been talking so long, um, this all, like almost all, I think like all of these, not almost all, I think like all of these, they do not run on 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, strictly 2.4 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz gives you better, I think 5 gigahertz gives you better range, but it does not go, <clears throat> is that right? 5 gigahertz is a stronger signal, it will give you better range, but it does not go through the walls as good as the 2.4, I think that's correct. Uh, chargers, can you charge this with a 5 volt charger, a standard USB charger? I believe that the, the Wise V2, the version 2, comes with a 1 amp charger and the outdoor camera comes with a 5 volt 2 amp charger. So if you want to use your own USB charger, you can do that, but you need to use a 2 amp. If you use a 1 amp, it's going to take you twice as long to charge this thing up. It might take you four to eight hours, and that's just nuts. Uh, travel mode, I talked about that. The travel mode distance is very limited. You will probably only be, like if you're at a campsite, Maybe if you set it up in your camper and you have it looking outdoors, or if you're in, a, in your living room and you're using the travel mode to look in the bedroom at a crib or something, or maybe at your crib, if you're a crib, if you know what I mean. Um, so if, you're, if you have this set up in your crib, looking at your crib, then the distance is limited. You're not going to be able to, you're probably not going to be able to put a camera outdoors and sit in your living room and travel mode this thing. But they're not saying what the distance is. Um, watching live will drain the battery. I don't understand what they mean by watching live. I don't know. I don't know if they allow you to do live streaming with this, the live stream like, uh, like you can with the V2. Um, they showed an example where they took the camera, they took this little cube camera, which has been tested extensively when they first designed it, and they tested it, they found they had water leaks going around the edge, the front seam over here. So the camera's been well designed, so there are no water leaks now. They put this in a water tank and kept it overnight, and the camera was still running. Don't do this, it will void the warranty. <clears throat> Um, somebody else said that they put it in the dishwasher, and I don't know if they ran it on the heat cycle, because the heat cycle is pretty darn hot in a dishwasher, but they put it in the dishwasher and plugged it in afterwards, and it worked perfectly. Um, somebody else took the camera, put it outside while it was snowing, and the camera ended up being a frozen block, in a frozen block of ice, and they brought it indoors, let it defrost, and then the camera worked. Uh, your mileage may vary with that. Um, it will work, yeah, it will work if you keep the cord plugged in, but it will limit your battery life. So in that case, if you're, 
if you're really looking for keeping a power cord in there, just buy the V2. The V2 is not waterproof. That's the only problem. And the V2 is not battery controlled. Um, what else? By the time it's released, it will work with Alexa and Google. And it will accept if this, then that rules. So if you know what if this, then that. So I believe they're saying that you can set this up that if, the, if a motion detector... If you have a motion detector outside and the light comes on, that light can do the, uh, can tell the camera to activate to record. I think that's what they're saying. Um, battery indicator. This is one really cool feature. This is a very cool feature. If the, when the bat, not if, when the battery gets low, the unit will push a notification to your cell phone that you need to recharge the battery. I don't know what, what percentage it does that, but that's pretty awesome. Uh, Wise is working on a video doorbell. Um, they're testing it right now. I thought they had one, but they are testing one. Um, uh, they were talking about batteries. They said a standard battery like this has a 300 to 500 cycle of charges before the battery will drop to 80% of power. So normally, during those first three to 500 charges, the battery will, you charge it up, it will hold 100% of the power until it drains out. After three to 500 charges, it will not hold 100% anymore. It will hold only 80%. Remember I said these are not replaceable. They're rechargeable, but not replaceable. And they're also estimating, well, okay, remember the three to 500 battery charges because there's something else down the list, I think, that I talk about that. Um, it is not being shipped to Canada right now and might never be shipped to Canada. I believe the V2 is not even shipped to Canada. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know if Canada restricts it. Uh, it sounds like Wise wants to ship to Canada, but they're not able to. Um, working on an outdoor power plug, but it's not available. That's kind of confusing to me that, they're, that, that I even have that there, but I heard that. It says they're working on an outdoor power plug, but they also say they don't want you to keep this thing plugged in because it will, I don't know what it will do. Um, <clears throat> the cost of the bundle, the camera and the base station is $50. If you buy an additional camera, it's $40. So if you want to buy this right now, you can do the pre-order. They're taking 50,000 pre-orders and then they're going to shut it down until they ship these out in August, and after they're shipped out, then they are going to start making them, supposedly they're going to make them available to others. But, so if you want to set this thing up, a camera and a base station, $50, $50 plus $10 shipping. So it's $60 to order this set right now. Um, if you buy the camera, just one camera, it's $40. I don't know how much the shipping is for that. I don't know if it's $10 shipping for just one camera, I'm not sure. Uh, and here's the big catch. Do I want to say that now or do I want to say that later? Um, no, I'm not going to say that now. I'm going to, that's, I'm going to end it because we're talking about $50, $50 for the bundle, so it's $60 for the whole thing. It's IP65 waterproof. It should be able to handle uh, rain. And as I said, they, they don't warranty this, but somebody tested it in a fish tank for I don't know how long, and it worked. And it was even showing video while it was underwater. Uh, again, they, in their paperwork, they say not recommended to connect it to power. That is their warning. They do not want this thing plugged in at all times. I don't know if it's because it will overheat or if they're worried about water leakage or moisture leakage. But they, this is a battery-operated camera that gets taken indoors to charge it. And you should not connect a cord and power this full time. Uh, it says this camera appears to do 12 second recordings. Yeah, is what I, that's what I said before. It does 12 second recordings, and if there is continued movement, it will keep recording, but it is not a continuous record camera like the V2, which will record continuously, and which is pretty impressive. Okay, here's uh, okay, the Wi Fi is B. 2.4 gigs, B, G, and N. Um, and now I'm going to give you the last three and then we're going to end the video.
and uh, this could be a big deal breaker. Now, when you're setting up a camera like this, I don't know, you set up an Arlo, you set up a Nest, they're 1080p, this is a 1080p camera. Um, and I don't know what the frame rates are on those cameras, but I think they're, they're doable, they're acceptable, they're okay, they're not maybe great, but they're, I don't know the exact frame rate. This outdoor camera at nighttime, let, no, let's do it in the daytime, because that's, the nighttime is even worse. 20 frames per second in the daytime. Now, the V2, the V2 indoor, I believe, I don't know, I don't know if it's seven. I looked at some of the video that I took and I thought it was saying seven frames a second. I was shocked. Um, and I could be wrong, I don't know. But daytime frames per second is 20 frames, nighttime 10 frames per second. 10 frames per second, I'm shooting this video right now at 30 frames per second and I this is on a 720p camera, I didn't do the 4K. 30 frames per second. Uh, 10 frames per second, I don't know what you're going to see at night. I, I just don't know. I've seen some of their test videos. Hard to say. 10 frames per second at night, a 12-second video clip. I don't know what to expect. And the last two things that, uh, I don't know if they're deal breakers or not. The base station must be connected to the Ethernet. So when you have this base station in your house, there's an Ethernet jack on there and you need to take a wire and plug it into the base station and then plug it into, it would obviously be your router. So <clears throat> you're gonna need this close to a router or you're gonna need a wire that's gonna connect the base station to a router. Uh, people were complaining, why, wasn't the, why didn't they set this up with Wi-Fi? Well, I don't know if you'd really wanna have a Wi-Fi camera talking to a Wi-Fi base that is then talking to Wi-Fi on your computer. I don't even know if that's possible. That's a lot of signals. Um, but this needs to connect to an Ethernet jack. And so if you have four, let's say that you have the uh, 12 cameras, you're going to have three bases. You're going to need to have three jacks on the back of your router to be able to plug all the base stations in. I don't think you can daisy chain them. I think it's going to have to be individual cables. So will they go to a, uh, a Wi-Fi box in the future? Maybe yes, maybe no. Hard to say. And the last thing that I want to say. Um, for two years they've been designing this camera because a lot of people wanted an outdoor camera. They wanted the outdoor camera. The V2 which I, it's an indoor camera. It is made for indoors. It is not made for outdoors. It's not made for the elements. Uh, you can go out and buy cases. You can use milk jugs. You can use, uh, make a little container. You can make a plexiglass thing. I don't know if it's gonna work with PIR uh, or with the motion detection, but people have made, and you can go online and buy lots of cases, lots of waterproof cases to plug the V2 in or to put the V2 in to set it up in your backyard um, and do the recording. The only problem with the V2 is you've got to provide it with power. So if it's outdoors, and that's the difference between these cameras, the V2, you can put it outside, you shouldn't put it outside, but people do anyway, and you've got to find a way to connect it to power. You shouldn't be using extension cords, you might have to dr maybe have an outlet outside, maybe you drill a hole in the garage through the wall and you patch it up, I, I don't know, however you do it, you need power. With this camera, you don't need power. That's the cool thing. But with the V2, you can do continuous recording f continuously. With this thing, you're dealing with 12-second clips. The V2 is $20. $20 for a camera that gives you continuous recording and live streaming compared to $50 plus the $10 shipping for a camera that's giving you, what did I say, at nighttime 10 frames per second, and which <laughs> 10 frames per second, I don't know what to say, but it's not continuous, it's a 12 second video clip. So, uh, wow. I check out my channel again, look, I just posted it a couple, like maybe a week or two ago, check the comparison, there's a comparison of the V2 
uh, wise indoor cam sitting outside on an air conditioning unit recording all night long and all day and I just posted a little video some video clips some pictures of that and I also had the outdoor Nui cam and I, I don't know what I think the Nui cam the indoor Nui cam is pretty impressive at, at uh, 40 bucks the wise camera indoor at twenty dollars is even better but the Nui camera indoors is pretty impressive and I think it's like forty dollars the Nui outdoor camera I think it's only shooting 15 frames per second also but the quality at all through the night you'll see the raccoon I mean the skunk that I saw in the backyard and you can see the motion uh, the motion activate no it wasn't it was continuous recording so I don't know should I buy do you want me to buy this camera I'm thinking do I want to spend sixty dollars to buy a camera that's got 10 frames per second at night the only awesome thing is that I could put it in the backyard and when the raccoon or the squirrel went in there I would get my little 12 second activation but I don't know about the the cool down period of one minute what if that raccoon the last time the squirrel went in the backyard saw it on video and then it ran behind the house and then it came back in the view and then ran between the house and the air conditioner then ran around the yard went back over to the gopher hole would I get all of that on this camera if it was being recorded in 12 second intervals or 12 second uh, clips? I don't know. Do me a favor. If you got to the end of this video, don't leave any bad comments about I talk too much and I ought to shut up because I'll block you and I'll report you. Um, should I spend the $60 to buy the camera? If I get enough people that say, yeah, I'll buy the camera, I'll do a review and we can see if it's any good. Uh, I believe it's going to be available on Amazon, but you're going to have to wait about two months for that, and that might be the way to go. So that if you connect it at 10 frames per second and you say, I'm not going to, I don't want to do this, you might be able to return it a lot easier than if you have to return it to Wise. So that's going to complete my video, and uh, a lot of info. I, don't, I hope this didn't go past 10 or 15 minutes, but it probably went really long. But I had a lot of info to share with you, and it's info that people want to know. So if you didn't want to know it, just move on and don't leave any rude comments. Check out my channel, the other videos I posted. Thanks for supporting me.